Here uh, I am going to demonstrate how to import uh, data that is uh, not in any uh, valid geodata file format into ArcGIS. And in this case we are going to import geodata in text files. Uh, to be specific, uh, we, we have some sort of table data table stored in a text file that uh, includes uh, geodata. In this case uh, we have point coordinates in the, in the table that we would like to import in ArcMap. Uh, so here I have some data. I have a background map, always important. I have downloaded a general map from the Swedish Cadastral Authorities. And this map is, uh, if we have a look here, it is in raster format. It's quite simple format, uh, enough for this demonstration, because we are not interested in um, uh, doing any fancy stuff with the map. We are just interested in uh, importing the point data in the text file. So we also have a text file here. Uh, and for you who are not familiar with the text file format, if we have a file with .txt, for example, uh, we should be able to open it, just double click on it, and it will use Notepad or WordPad as default in Windows to open it. And we have, just as the name indicates, uh, text in the file, and we are not... Uh, it's not possible to save any formats, like having it bold or italic, uh, or something like that, it's just text. Numbers and text. Uh, you just you can just type, and it's you can open it and have a look at it. So this is the table saved in text file format, and um, the we have a special uh, character here. It's a semicolon used for separating uh, things in columns. We can close the text file uh, for the time being, and we go to ArcMap. Now, uh, in the catalog window, we should now uh, find our workspace, and our workspace uh, had is, is this one, import text, it's the fol folder name, and we have uh, the folder with the general map raster, and we have actually the text file here. The text file um, is recognized by ArcGIS as a possible source of geodata, actually. <clears throat> but, as always, we are going to start with the background map. And the background map uh, we can, in this case, find in the subfolder clip result. And it's a raster TIFF format. And to be sure, if we're not sure uh, if the reference system is defined here or not, we can always right-click on it and choose Properties. And scroll down a little bit to the section where it says Spatial Reference. And if it says Sverf99 uh, TM in this case, we are okay. In case it would have uh, it it would have been undefined, we could we would read here undefined, and if that uh, would be the case, we would have to click the edit button and define the re reference system. In this case, we are fine. You can close it, this window, and just drag and drop it into the table of contents. So, here is um, the an, um, general map in raster format, quite a simple map, but uh, nevertheless some kind of map. So this is okay. Now, we have the text file, and we go back to the Windows Explorer, where we can uh, open the text file again, by double click on it, and have a closer look at it. Um, uh, the first row in this text file is the first row in the table of, of data, and this, this, this is uh, the most important part here. Uh, there are special rules that you must follow in this row, because this row uh, will uh, define the name of the fields uh, in other words, the, the, the name of the uh, columns with the different kinds of data in this table. 
Uh, for example, we cannot use spaces, empty spaces, uh, and we cannot use the special Swedish letters, for example, the O, E, Ö, the A's with rings and dots, and O's with dots. And it's not possible to use any, any special characters other than the underscore sign. So if we start from the beginning here, the first field name, oops, uh, from the beginning up and uh, up to the semicolon, first semicolon it says sjö id in Swedish, and there we have a Swedish letter, ö, the o with the dots. So what we generally do with these things is that we replace uh, the uh, Swedish characters with characters without rings and dots. So, so this would be replaced with an O. And the next character is a space character. We don't, we cannot use that either. And uh, what, what we generally do with spaces is that we replace spaces with underscore signs or underscore char characters. In the second field name here, um, we also have a Swedish character, the O with the dots, replace it with a simple O. And if we have a look further down to the end, we have some field that has the name um, scale, start parenthesis, one uh, to five, end parenthesis. This um, Special characters uh, parenthesis is, is not allowed, so what we do with those kind of things can depend a little bit, but in this case it would be proper to rep simply replace th them with underscore characters. And the minus uh, char character also is not allowed, replaces with, a, with, with an underscore character, and the last parenthesis we could just remove. So. This and of course the text uh, in the following rows are they are okay. You can use spaces and Swedish characters and numbers and mix whatever you like, almost. Uh, the only thing that has to be correct is the number of uh, separator characters. And the separator characters is uh, in this case the semicolon. So the same number of semicolon has to be on the on, on in, in each of the rows here. Best, uh, we fix the first row and hope for the best. Close uh, the text file and if uh, Windows asks if you would like to save the changes, yes, we would like to do that. Now, uh, we go back to ArcMap where we have previously um, uh, added the uh, general map in raster format. Uh, find your text file in the catalog window here, and what you do, uh, maybe I should sh uh, minimize the window a little bit, right click on the text file and choose export, no, no, sorry, uh, create feature class from XY table, and you get an error message, and as in general this always happens when you try to import a text file. It says something about that. It was an error trying to process this table. Just click OK and go back to Windows Explorer where, you, where we recently opened the text file and have a look. The fact is now that ArcGIS has actually created another file called Schema Ini. It's this one. Uh, we open the schema in Usually you can double click these files uh, like this to, op to, to open them. I close it again and just in case you cannot open it by, by just double click on it, right click on it and choose open with and choose one of these text file editors, either notepad or word, wordpad. It will do the same trick, for me at least. Here is the contents of the schema ini file. The schema ini file, uh, in, inside the schema ini file you have, uh, it's defined how ArcGIS uh, is going to read the contents of, of text files. So you have two rows here, at least two rows. One row 
where the name of the shape file, uh, sorry, text file, is in this guy in this case uh, fish data underscore en dot txt. And under this row, it's defined uh, how the text is read inside this file. You can have several text files in this folder, then you would have several uh, row combinations like this. And this is, this, is, this is the problem, because ArcGIS never can fi figure out what kind of format you are using um, to read tables in the text file. So it, it uh, always says format equal to CSV delimited here, CSV delimited with no space. And this will not work. What you will do here is remove the, the first three letters uh, after the equal sign, the C, S and V. So it only says delimited and immediately after the delimited where delimited uh, ends, no, no spaces, just type start parenthesis and type a semicolon and end parenthesis. No spaces. Uh, and this means that uh, ArcGIS um, is going to use the semicolon as a column separator when it reads the table inside the text file. Close the text file, save it, if Windows ask, should ask, at least. Um, go back to ArcMap, do the exact same procedure again. Right click on the text file, create feature class from XY table, and now something else happens. Now you have made uh, ArcGIS to actually uh, be able to read the text file. You might have still have error messages, but then it would probably be because you have not something you have not fixed in the first row in the text file. Now, anyway, here, uh, when you are, you are importing text file, you, you must also know uh, in what reference system or coordinate system the, uh, the geodata is defined in, in the table. And now we know that, we, we know it's RT90, and RT90, if we have RT90 data, uh, uh, generally we have to switch. The X field is the Y field in RT90, and the Y field in Sverif99 is the X field in RT90. Coordinate system of input coordinates, very important. Click there, select, projected coordinate system, uh, national grids, Sweden, and RT90 um, 2.5 gone west. It's this one that says RT90 2.5 gone west. Click add and click OK. And very important again, specify the output folder. Uh, this should be this one in my case. And as a default, uh, he proposes the XY fish data underscore en shape file name we just click save i think this is okay and we should now be okay by just clicking okay and uh, now we have a shape file in our work workspace here uh, note that these point data now is in defined in the reference system rt90 2.5 gone west, the former national grid in Sweden. While our project in our project we use uh, Sphere F99. So we need to convert these point data into a uh, feature data set uh, that has the coordinates in um, Sphere F99. Now in the former exercise we use the project uh, tool. In uh, this demonstration we are going to use a little bit different method. We just take the RT90 data and add them uh, in the table of contents and then we get a geographic coordinate warning system. If you get this um, uh, window, dialog window, number one you know that you might have problems with your 
coordinate system of your data or your data frame. Uh, and the second thing you should think of that always, always click on the transformations button here to check what ArcGIS is going to do. You get another window. It says geographic coordinate system transformations. Um, check that this is correct. Now, RT90 wants to convert from uh, RT 1990, which is correct, actually, into uh, Sverf 99. This uh, second field is is most of the case correct. It's the first field that can you you can you can have a quick look at. So it is not uh, RTIS has not chosen the wrong one. And the third field using you should should open this uh, list and choose the correct one. You should choose RT90 to Sverf 99. This one. So click OK and close. And if we change the color and size here a little bit, we could actually see. Um, oops. Now where the points ends up. So we actually have the points here on the map. But uh, mixing coordinate system, especially RT90 and Sphere F99, you, you can ha could have small nasty errors that you don't even realize that you have. So we will still create a new shapefile uh, dataset in uh, the correct reference system. In the table of contents, um, uh, right click on the point data set you just imported um, here, choose data and export data. <coughs> now this is uh, uh, this here uh, you choose all features to begin with and for use the same coordinate system as you select the data frame because the data frame here is actually defined in Sverf 99. So you select the data frame uh, for the source of reference system. Output feature class, again, click the browse button, always. Find um, your workspace, uh, should be here. And define the proper name. And I will call it points converted or PTS C for short. Save as type uh, you could have a check here so that it, it really says shape file. Click save and you should be okay clicking you know, just okay again. And you get the question do you want to add the exported data to the map as a layer? Yes we would like that. So now we actually have uh, another point data set here. So we can begin with removing the old data set here. It doesn't remove anything uh, in the catalog window. It just removes it from the table of contents. Blow up the, or at least I would like to change the color of the points. And the size also. Let's see if my computer, no, there we have it, yes. And I again I choose red and I increase the size a little bit like this. So here we have the points. It seems like they are in the same location, but we cannot be sure until we actually create a point data set, uh, convert it to a point data set uh, with the correct reference system. So now we have imported uh, geo, geo point data in a text file into ArcMap. So the next step would be to change to layout view and have the map properly form formatted. Include the things that you should have here. Probably some kind of north arrow, your name and title and maybe also a scale bar or something like that. Yeah, thank you.